This is the word of God. I love the word of God. The word of God will work in my life. But I must study and work the word. Jesus' death. We're going to look at spit, at his beard, 
beard and at the crown of thorns. And as we examine each of these, prayerfully some life-changing things will begin within you this morning. Amen. In our scripture text, Pilate has condemned Jesus to death. Amen? Amen. Scripture says they have scourged him, they have beaten him, and after they've scourged him and beaten him, then scripture says that the soldiers took him into the midst of the judgment hall and called a whole band of soldiers to surround him. Now, the question that comes to my mind is, once Pilate sentenced Jesus to be crucified, why did the soldiers find it necessary to do all these other things to him? Once Jesus had been crucified, uh, sentenced, uh, condemned to death, why did they simply take him back to his holding cell where he could await crucifixion? But the answer is the reason that they didn't just do this, the reason that they uh, stripped him of his clothing and they put another robe on him and then they took a branch of thorns and crowned it uh, put it on his head and they took a, a reed and put it in his hand and then they bowed their knee to him mocking him. The reason that they did all these things was because the beast inside of them needed to have some fun. You say, Pastor, I don't understand that. I'm understanding, I'm talking about that beast is, that is inside of people that caused them want, to want to just hurt and humiliate other people. I want you to understand that the soldiers were not commanded by power to do all of these things. They did these things out of themselves. I want you to look at this scene and I want you to see how ugly it is and I want you to notice that every time they did one thing to him, when they crowned him with the thorns and when they put the uh, robe on his back that was beaten, nothing that they did was satisfying enough to them that the beast continue to say, you got to do more, you got to do more, you got to do more. Amen. I want you to think about that for a moment. You ask yourself the question, why did God allow these things to happen? In the book of Isaiah, it tells us that they even reached up and took a, a handful of his hair and snatched it out. Why did God allow these things to happen? all, couldn't he just put him to death? And that would have been the end of him. He still would have been dying for our sin. So why allow him to go through all of this? My brothers and sisters in Christ, the answer to that question is because of sin. God had to allow Jesus to go through all of this because of sin. Because God tells us in scripture, it says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So God, through these people, is allowing them, not that he ordained it, but he's allowing them to do these inhumane things to him to reveal to us the ugliness of sin. He wants to reveal to us the ugliness of sin. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to examine the spit. We're going to examine the spit. Now, when somebody spits in somebody's face, that is the lowest thing in my estimation that someone can do to somebody else. If a person spits in someone's face, they are devaluing them. They are degrading, degrading them. They are saying to them, you count for nothing. You are less than pond scum under the bottom of my shoe. Yeah. So when they spit in the face of Jesus, what they were doing was not only humiliating him, but they were degrading him. Yeah. They were devaluing him. They were saying to him, you are worth less than nothing. God says to ask you this morning, have you ever spit in somebody's face? Most of you in here would probably say no. But 
do you know that there's different ways of spitting Amen. Amen. in somebody's Amen. face? Amen. Remember that the, so I told you, I just said that spitting in someone's face was degrading them, devalu devaluing them, saying that they were worse, less than nothing. Have you ever done anything like that to another person? Have you ever devalued somebody by gossiping about them behind their back? Yeah. Have you ever hurt somebody and you knew you hurt them, but instead of you doing something to help the hurt, you go in there and stick the knife in a little deeper and twist it? Yeah. And then you get some satisfaction wow. on causing them that additional pain. Yeah. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Have we ever spit on someone, we do that when we devalue them and make them feel like they are less than nothing. Amen. But then God told me to turn the question around and to ask you, have you ever spit in Jesus' face? Oh, no, Pastor, I never spit in Jesus' face. But God says, when you've done it to the least of these my children, You've done it unto me. Amen, amen, amen. When you've done it to the least of these, my children, you've done it unto me. <laughs> Examine yourself. Amen. During the next 40 days, yeah. Yeah. thinking oh. about the spit. The spit shows the inhumanity of sin. I want you to think about it for a moment. I want you to understand when they spit Jesus' face, nowhere in scripture does it say that anybody took the time to wipe it off. I want you to understand when it says that they spit in their face and I imagine that they hop deep from inside of him and put a real good, I imagine that it was hanging there off of parts of his beard that was still on his face. And I imagine that even as he was going up the hill to Galgotha, they asked Simon to help him carry his cross. I don't even know. Scripture does not say that Simon took the time to wipe his face. Why? Because Jesus had to take that step to the cross. Jesus had to take that step to the Amen. Why? Wow. Because the spit is revealing the beast that is inside Amen. of humankind. You say, Pastor, I don't have any beast inside of me. God says, you do. Turn up. Thank you, Jesus. Turn to Mark. I don't have a beast inside of me. I don't have something that causes me to be hurtful and harmful to other people. I don't degrade people. I don't talk about them behind their back. I don't cheat on them. I don't lie on them. I don't do all these harmful things to them. God says, okay, let me show you the beast that is inside of you. Let me show you why Jesus had to carry that spit to the cross. Mark 7, verse 20 to 23, I'm going to be reading out of the NIV. If you have it, speak to me, Lord. He went on. What comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. For from within, out of man's heart, comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, Malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, folly, all of these evil things come from inside. They come from the beast that is inside of you. Amen. Amen? Amen. God said, this is a description of the beast that lies within humankind. And what Jesus wants you to know is that when he carried that spit to the cross, that he was carrying the, uh, uh, the inhumanity of these sins to the cross with him. Amen. So that you no longer have to have this beast on the inside. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The spit represented Inhumanity of sin. 
I said, I take that to the cross so that no one can ever say to you again that you are worth nothing, that you are less than nothing. Because I carry that spirit to the cross. Amen. Speak to me, Lord. So Haman sees David's men, shaved off half of each man's beard, cut off their garment in the middle of the buttocks, and sent them away. When David was told about this, he sent messengers to meet the men, for they were greatly humiliated. The king said, Stay at Jericho till your beards have grown, and then come back. This first scripture is to show you that in Eastern culture, it was one of the most serious kinds of insults to shave off of somebody's beard. It was an insult to shave off their beard. Okay? When they, they happened to David's men, David told them, said, you go in hiding until your beard grows back, and then you can come on out. So they would be humiliated. But there was another time that people would shave off their own beards. And I need you to turn to Isaiah for that. Okay? I need you to turn to Isaiah. If someone else cut their beard, that was an insult. But there was a time when the men would shave off of their own beards and shave off of their own heads. Isaiah 15, 2 and 3. Isaiah 15, 2 and 3. Okay. Okay. This is so powerful. I don't know about this powerful. You ready? Yes. Speak to me, Lord. Demon goes up to the temple, to the high places, to um, worship. I think I don't know what Weep. that is. I typed it wrong. We. Okay. Yes. Moab webs over Nebo and Medeba. Every head is shaved and every beard cut off. In the streets they wear a sackcloth, on the roof and in the public squares they all well prostrate with, prostrate with weeping. What is it saying? It is saying that when a man or person was in deep mourning, they cut off their beard. When a person was in deep mourning, they cut off their beard. God allowed Jesus' beard to be ripped out. Not only did they think they were insulting him, but God used this half a beard to symbolize that all of heaven was in mourning about the sin of humanity and what was getting ready to happen to our Lord and our Savior. Yeah. Yeah. That's a sign of Sin breaks Jesus' heart. We take sin so lightly and we say everybody's doing it. But sin breaks Jesus' heart. Remember when Jesus was going up Calvary's hill and he fell under the weight of the cross and they had Simon pick it up and Jesus is laying there exhausted and he looks over and he sees the women on the side and they're weeping and moaning and crying and he said, don't cry. Amen. He said, don't cry for me. Cry for yourself. He yeah. is mourning Woo. over the lostness of humankind. Yeah. He was mourning over the sinfulness of humankind. Yeah. 
His kingship. Pain. Pain. Crown of thorns. Thorns. Pain. Almost, not quite. Turn your Bibles to Gen Genesis 3, 17 to 18. Genesis 3, 17 to 18. Why did they crown him with a crown of thorns? Why did they just take a basket and put it on his hand? I, I mean, I'm not being facetious, but why a crown? Everything, you've got to understand, when you read, read the word, every time God gives details, there is a meaning behind the detail. Like when the men cut the fish and Jesus said, there was 150 big fish. There's a meaning when God gives details. So why crowning with a crown of thorns? Why just put a hat on his head, a helmet, one of the soldiers' helmets? Why a crown of thorns? Genesis 3, 17 to 18. Did you, what did you say? I said, why even take the time to grade it up? Amen. You know what I mean? Amen. Amen. It did. Genesis 3, 17 and 18. And did I say Genesis? Mm -hmm. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the trees of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou should not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herbs of the tree. But that, and uh, Hebrews 6, 8, you don't have to turn to it, write it down. Hebrews 6, 8, but that which beareth thorns and bras is rejected, and nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. Okay, what is the thorns? The thorns is a result of sin. The thorns represent the result of sin. It does not represent sin itself, but it represents, it represents what happened after sin. God said, because you sin, I'm going to curse the ground. And it's going to be filled with thorns and thistles. And you're going to have to work the ground with the sweat of your brow and all this other kind of stuff. The thorns that, that uh, uh, was made and, and made into a crown and put on Jesus' head represented the result of sin. The result of sin. Amen. Look at it. When they put it on his head, this is the result of sin. My having to go through all of this that I'm going through is a result of your sin. Amen. The thorns represented the result of sin. But not only that. Thorns <coughs> represent difficulty. It represents problems. It, it represents not being able to do, you know, in the Garden of Eden, they could just go and pluck an apple or pluck a pear, and they didn't have to uh, do the ground. I mean, you know, it was all soft or whatever. But now there was thorns and thistles everywhere. God says that's what happens when you fall into sin. Amen. The Amen. thorns and thistles in your life, rather than the path being easy, the path is difficult Amen. because you come and you sin and you've caused all of these thorns and thistles Amen. to grow up in your marriage, in Amen. your relationship, in your children. Yes, it Lord. is the result wow. yes, Lord. of wow. sin. Amen. 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 This 40 days of Lent, don't allow this Lent to be like any other Lent you've ever experienced before. Meditate on it each week. Yes. God is going to give us different symptoms. I don't know where he's going next week. I didn't know this until Saturday night. And when I came home from Bible study yesterday, 4 o'clock I sat down on the computer. And I typed till 7.30. Amen. Amen. I had another sermon prepared Friday. I thought I was good to go until I went to bed. And I'll tell you what I did, only because God said it served you right. I was tired. So I decided I was going to take a song that I appreciate. Mount Zion. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, he's never permitted me in, I've been in the ministry now for 20, 13 years, 9, 22 years. I've never permitted <laughs> to 
use different scriptures, but it's always different. 22 years, I've never been permitted. But I thought he told me I could do it because I was <laughs> But I took a recycle that thing and changed that. I said, hey, that sounds pretty good. I went to bed. He said, that's what you think. And then the next day, this is what I got. Amen. 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 Meditate on these, but that shows you if you listen. Amen. You know, Amen. If you listen, and I'm so glad that you changed it. Amen. 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 Spit, beard, Think about what they symbolize. Yeah. Like this week to next week. Amen. And then God will give you some soul. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 Let us pray. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 